Now, chances are you have heard the longtime infamous song by Michael Jackson. You know, the one where he talks about taking a look at the man in the mirror. Now for us, it's the woman in the mirror, but here is the sentiment. Being willing to take a true, authentic look at ourselves, who we really are and what we're really stumbling over, what I like to call that me work. It's where we become the center of attention, focused on our growth and maturity. And if we're willing to take that journey of self-discovery, we can emerge even more powerful. Now, my conversation today is going to talk about such a journey, such a me work journey that will help to unmask everything that you've been pretending. Now, let's get into it. For the longest time, I secretly wanted more. I often found myself shrinking to fit in, settling for what was comfortable, and even selling myself short. Once I finally accepted that we deserve success and we are blessed with the power to achieve it, I stopped playing small. I'm serious about building a life I love, and you should be too. I'm Denise Taylor of DeniseTaylor.live, and welcome to Embrace Your Power. I help women prioritize themselves, their success, and their happiness. Now, let's meet this week's achiever whose story will inspire you to embrace your power and go. Well, hello to you. It's Denise Taylor here. And you know, I'm always excited to have you join me each and every week right here on Embrace Your Power. Now, this is the place where you can count on me to always encourage you to build a life that you love. You see, around these parts, we believe that God has given us power to do exactly that. And when we embrace that power, we can be, do, have, and achieve anything that we want. Now, I will say this. I think you're going to be divinely inspired. And those things that you seek after, they're going to bring you such long-lasting satisfaction and fulfillment. But nothing happens until you start to pursue your hopes, visions, and dreams. And that is what I want to always encourage you to do is to jumpstart your success. Now, I don't know if you're watching me on YouTube or maybe you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, but I want you to know I value our connection. And so if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so that I show up in your lineup each and every week. More than that, I'd love to hear from you. So if you haven't left a rating or review, I want you to know that those things are valuable to me and I appreciate the feedback. So take a couple minutes and do that today. Now we've got a fantastic episode lined up for you. I think you're going to be challenged. I think you're going to be encouraged and I think you're going to be empowered. The conversation today is going to continue in the vein of helping us to grow and mature. I had a chance to get my hands on a book by Nika Arnold Scott. And this book, I'm telling you, though it's simple, it is transformative if you are willing to take the journey. Now, I often talk about the me work where we are at the center of our attention and we're doing the things to help us grow and mature. And this book has some very practical approaches to help with that journey. Now, here's what I know. Many of us have experiences in our past that makes us bring baggage into our today. And if we don't contend with the experiences that we have, we can have strongholds that tether us to pain. And you know, I want you you to be free to be able to soar to the heights that are designed for your life. And so that means we've got to deal with the stuff. We've got to deal with the baggage that we bring into our today, into our relationship, into all aspects of our life so that we can be free to soar. It's going to require us to do some change, to do some me work, to really look at our heart and to see what ways we may be hindering or even standing 
in the way of our own progress. We may have to deal with some past hurts and some past pain, but here's what I do know to be true. If you're willing to dig down and excavate those things out, you don't find pain. You find your power. You find your power on the other end of you dealing with your stuff. And for the longest time, the mistake that I had in my own mind with my own thinking is if I really went after the things that I was tethered to from my past, I would find more hurt. But that wasn't what the truth was. I found my power. And now I'm on a mission. I am on a mission to really encourage you to embrace your power, to grow, evolve, mature, and to really show up in a very strong light. And that is the reason why my conversation with Nika today is so incredible. She has written a book with some very practical ways that can help you really do the excavation work to bring yourself the authentic version of you to life. She really has captured the self-discovery that is necessary for you to unmask yourself and show up authentically strong. So take a listen to this incredible conversation that I have with Nika. And I'll see you on the other side. So I'm so excited to have Nika join me today. And I will tell you, she is a friend of a friend that has become a friend. And I am so blessed. You know, when you know good people, chances are they are connected to other good people. And I've had the chance to just watch how Nika shows up and serves. She shows up to serve women and wives. She shows up to serve empowerment. In fact, she's on the heels of a fantastic expo that took place in Atlanta. But the thing that piqued my interest was when I saw Nika post about her book. The title alone drew me in because I know once we truly start unmasking things, we get to discover a lot of authenticity and beauty. And that transformational journey usually results in to someone who shows up as bright as Nika. And so I'm so excited to have her join today. And she does a lot of things, but we're going to get a glimpse into more about her in her journey to becoming. And so Nika, welcome to Embrace Your Power. Do me a favor, introduce yourself. Thank you so much, Denise, first of all, for having me. I never take it lightly when somebody decides to, you know, share their platform, share their audience with you. So I honor you. Thank you so much for having me. But I am Nika Arnold Scott, a girl raised right here in ATL, Georgia. What can we do for you? Um, I am... Listen, I am all things girly. I am a mom. I'm a lovey. I'm a wife. I'm a coach. I'm a consultant. Um, I'm a foodie. I'm all the things your home girl likes to do. Um, so I love women empowerment. I love serving women, love serving wives. That's just what I do because I am all of that. Um, my new saying is that I'm her. So I am the wife. I'm the mom. I'm the grandma. You know, I'm all that, but. The most thing, the the biggest thing I want people to know about me is that I've been there and I understand and it's okay. So that's me, Denise, who I am. What you see is what you get from me. I'm definitely all the way from College Park, um, the youngest of four children from my mom. So what you see is what you get from me, really. I love it. I love it. I love it. And today is going to be good because when I really looked at the title of your book and this whole discovery process that you personally went on and then captured to help other women take that journey too, it was really, really powerful. I, I, I took the book and I sat down in the early morning, which is really like prime time for me, right? That's when everything's fresh. And I literally read it cover to cover in one sitting. And my desire now is to go back and experientially do everything that you outlined in it, because it truly is a self-discovery that you went on. So unpack that journey for us. Unpack the journey that you took to truly unmasking. Well, first, I can say it was a heck of a journey. And it was not easy. 
um, I did not come to the decision of taking that journey just because I had nothing else to do. You know, I got fed up with not being fulfilled. I got fed up with shrinking. I got fed up with not fully showing up, you know, who I was. And so I had to take a long, hard look in the mirror at myself and say, okay, Nika, you get to decide who you're going to show up as and how you're going to show up. You can decide that, you know, you're going to do everything that everybody else wants you to do. That comes with a price. Or you can decide to show up fully in who you are. That's also going to come with a price. So you have to choose your heart. And so in that, I chose to be me. I chose to do the hard work that was necessary for me to show up unapologetically as Nika and those that love it, hey, we can have a party. And those that didn't, I'm sorry. I'm Maybe I'm just not your girl. So for me, it started with making that decision. Like, who do I want to be? And how do I want to show up? And being able to stay committed to that work of being her. And so that's how this journey really started because I was exhausted of wearing a mask. You know, I was exhausted with, being this over here for these people, being this over here for these people and not knowing which one I really was like, that's exhausting. Can you imagine performing all of the time? Like just all of the time. And that's what my life was like before I decided to take this journey and say, Who, do I really like that? Or do I like that? Because the people that I like, like that, you know? And so that's really how, the journey started for me, just me taking a look at myself and just being disgusted, you know, with the image that I was portraying to everybody else. And it wasn't really who I was. Yeah, the authenticity, you know, when you really wrote out and were honest with yourself with that point, because many of us aren't ready to be honest and saying that we're pretending to be something we aren't for the sake of fitting in or trying to make other people happy. That's a huge revelation that we may know, but it's very hard for us to admit. And you not only reached the point where you were willing to admit that, you know, like I have not been showing up as true to myself. I have not been authentic for what I desire, what I want, or what I even like. And Making that admission really set you up to choose the heart, like you said. Why do you think that happens to so many of us that pretending to fit in? Because it's easier. It's just like, why do you blame other people for your stuff? It's easier to shift the blame. It's easier always to look outside of yourself to find what's wrong or to find, okay, uh, I don't know about that. That's easy. So we choose that because it's easy. You know what I mean? We don't oftentimes say, okay, you know what? Like Michael Jackson said, I'm starting with the man in the mirror. Mm -hmm. It sounds great. But when you really start to do that work and you really come to a realization, it's like, oh no, like your thought process is messed up. You have negative thinking. You know, you walk in fear. You know, like, you really don't know who you are. You really don't know the power that you possess. Like you really don't know you, you know? So it's easier, Denise, to look at everything outside of you and blame that. It's easy for me to blame my mom or my dad, you know, or my circumstances. It's easy to do that, you know? But for me to say, okay, it's me, then that requires me to do something. That requires me to take ownership and responsibility. And most of the time, we don't want to do that. We want to blame somebody else because we want them to fix it rather than us fixing ourselves with what's wrong with us, with us doing the work. You know what I mean? We want other people to do the work. But to look at something and say, okay, what am I contributing to this? Or why am I staying? Or why am I allowing this to bother me? That takes work. Mm -hmm. And nobody nobody wants to get dirty. Hmm. You're right. 
because our stuff typically ain't clean when Mm. we really are willing to take a look at it. And that pretending to fit in that mask that we wear, oftentimes is covering up the stuff that we don't want to identify with. We don't want to deal with the stuff that we perceive has us bound when really we're holding on to it. It's not holding on to us. Now, I'll tell you this. One of the things that stuck out to me as I was reading, probably because I found myself there at one point in time, we take on all of these different roles, right? And one of the things we typically define ourselves as being a mom or as being a wife, the point that you reached and when you wrote, it was hard to see your beauty. That made me really think about the pretending taking over and us just being completely lost in it. And we have we have taken on these roles, we have taken on these responsibilities, but we don't get a chance to really know who we are. And so the self-discovery work that you went on to find that answer and that authenticity is so valuable and important. Tell us about that journey. Oh man, that journey was grueling (laughs) because I had to unlearn a lot of things that I learned through my childhood because I was teased as a kid, you know, um, for being skinny, for being tall, for talking too much, you know, all of these things that I so graciously possess today. And that what makes me Nika, you know? And so for me, I didn't know that I, that I could be loved. I didn't know that I should be loved. I didn't know that I was worthy of love. I didn't know that I was beautiful because I had been told so much that I was ugly, that I was da, 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 da. So I started to believe that. So I didn't see my beauty, you know? And so I didn't even know that I wasn't being myself until I started to have daughters. And then I'm like, There's no way I can teach them about how beautiful they are and how worthy they are and how powerful they are. I can't do that if I don't possess that for me. How can I pass it on to them? Mm -hmm. And so my daughters were really the inspiration behind this journey. So that's how the work really started. And then I started to journal. Like I'm, I say I'm a writer down. I write down almost everything. Okay, how I'm feeling, what I want to do. I believe in the spoken word and I believe in the written word. And so that was a key piece of my journey as well, because it allowed me to chronicle and document my growth and, you know, what I was going through and just getting it out of my head and getting it on paper so I could face it. Because oftentimes when we have stuff in our heads, it can still hide. But when we write it down, when it's documented in black and white, it's like, okay, this is real. And it's like, all right, now what do I do? What do I do with this realization of me being um, unloved or feeling unloved or unworthy, you know, or doubting myself or not having, you know, the self-confidence to say no, you know, to someone or whatever and getting that down on paper. It, 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 it's a reality check. It's like, dang, this is how I really see myself? This is how I really feel? You know, because you can you can have a thought and then you look at something else and then it quiets that thought. But if you have it written down, it's there. I remember seeing this young girl type something that resonated with me. She, was, she said, all my life, I was teased. I was dark skinned. I was told I was ugly. And all of a sudden I hit my twenties and everyone's like, oh, you're beautiful. And she's looking like, where were you back when I was coming up and they were dogging me out? And that is a lot of our experiences in those formative years. We don't get the accolades, the nurturing, the compliments. We get the flaws, the criticism, the pointing out of our uniquenesses as if they are something working against us. And unfortunately, those lies are the things that got to us first and we believe them. And so you're right. I know for myself, I was still successful. I was still functioning. I was still accomplishing. But deep within myself, I still felt powerful. 
powerless. I still felt unworthy. I still felt like I needed to prove something based on all that baggage that I brought to the table. And so I love how you recognize that you wanted the buck to stop with you. You did not want this to be something that you then saw transferred into your children. You wanted to write things so that they could truly begin to understand not only how beautiful they are, but how empowered they are and what they could accomplish. Now, one of the things that I love that you warned a couple of times during the course of the book is this. You said this self-discovery process often results in walking alone and that people will start disappearing out of your life. Why does this happen? And is this a good or a bad thing? Um, I think that it could be a good thing, definitely. And the reason why I say that is sometimes the people that are around us are around us because we're blind. We're really blind to who we are. And they can manipulate that, use it to their benefit if they know that we don't know how powerful we are, right? And so sometimes it does result in you walking alone because you start to wake up to you. You start to wake up and say, okay, you know what? I... I really don't like to be talked to like that. You know what I'm saying? Or I'm really trying to grow mentally as a person. I'm trying to grow spiritually. I'm trying to, you know, change my physique with working out or whatever. Whenever you decide to do something different than the people in your circle, they don't recognize you anymore. That's why I say, oh, you're starting to change or you're not the same or dang, we used to do this together, but now you're different. And I am different. You know what I mean? You're different too. You're just not different in the way that I need you to be different so that we can still be in the same circle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So, and I think too, when we are alone, we really get to analyze our own thoughts and not the words of other people. So I didn't used to like being alone. Right. Like in in my earlier years, my sister would tell me all the time, Nika, you need to slow down. You're always going, 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 going. And what I didn't realize at the time was I was running from myself. I was running from sitting down with myself and saying, "Okay, Nika, you need to get yourself together. You know, because I thought that if I busied myself, I didn't have to worry about that. Right. But it still catches up with you. You know what I mean? So for me. The alone was scary because I was afraid of who I was going to discover that I was in that solitude with just me. You know what I mean? Can you imagine being in a room with somebody that you really don't know? And it's like, okay, do I say something first or do I let them say something first or do I just sit quietly? You know, it was kind of like that because you sit across from yourself. And for me, I didn't want to face that little girl in myself. I didn't want to hear her insecurities. I didn't want to hear her hurt. I didn't want to hear that. I wanted to act like she wasn't there. Mm -hmm. So for me, being alone was like, okay, when you are with you, you got to deal with you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we're distracted by other people. And when nobody is there, there's no distraction. It's just you and you. I know exactly what you mean. And I will also say in those spaces, If you can get past those initial fears of that recognition, those are the places where God usually shows up, right? Because you have quieted down your life in such a way that you can finally hear what he is trying to get to you, what he is trying to share with you, what he is trying to reveal to you, and even give you glimpses into what your assignments or next steps need to be. But you're so right. Sometimes we keep the busy going. And I know for myself, I kept the busy going fast and furious. And it wasn't until I began to slow things down and really deal with some of the me work. This is the work that you're talking about, the work on yourself and deal with some of that, that I realized the thing that I was afraid to address did not reveal weakness. It revealed my power. Mm -hmm. That's what I really realized. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes we're afraid to slow down. We're afraid to deal with it because we think it's going to cripple us in some way. We think it's going to hinder our ability when really it's going to release you to be able to soar and to go forward. That right there, Denise, 
that is it. One of my favorite movies is Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. And my favorite part of that movie is when she does this. Mm -hmm. When she does this, like you can see such a powerful release that comes from her. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, not only did she realize like who she was for real, for real, but everybody else, they knew it. But in that moment, in that moment, when she realized who she was, everybody else realized that she now knows who she is right? and right. the power that she possessed. You know what I'm saying? And so that's what has to happen with you and you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You have to, because the inner you is always speaking. Mm -hmm. The inner you is always giving you direction. The inner you is always telling you what she needs. And Oftentimes, the issue comes when we try to silence her. Mm -hmm. But when we just let her speak and let her do what she was designed to do, it's like there's a shift in your mindset. There's a shift in your positioning. You know, there's a, a, a different power that comes from your voice when when you and yourself align. If that make, it makes sense to me in mm -hmm. my head, but when you and your authentic self, Align, it's like that Wonder Woman moment. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah I like, I, that's exactly, the, yeah, what you said was exactly right. Yeah. So, so here's what I also love that you pointed out because oftentimes, just as we want to place the blame on someone, we often don't want to take the responsibility. And you called us out on this. I love that you admonish that it's not all on God but we have work to do too. And you shared the work would be difficult. And we've talked about that, but embracing that truth is so important. And I love that you say, hey, you got a role to play in this. And so help us understand how we need to show up and what God's really going to show up and do for us in that journey. Yeah, I think that like for me, once I made the commitment because a lot of times we say, oh, I'm just going to pray about it. I'm going to wait for God to show me. But the signs have been there all along, right? When you come into agreement and say, okay, God, now I'm ready for you to show me. And you really, really desire it with all of your heart. Then there is something that clicks in you. It's kind of like when you become a mom. You've never mothered before. You don't really know what that's like, but it's innate. So once the baby comes, your body and your mind automatically know there's another sense, you know, that just ignites when that happens. And so for me, when I decided that, you know what, I know that there's something that I need to do because there's some decisions that I made or did not make that got me here. That's why I said, I can't put it all on God mm -hmm. because I'm making decisions daily. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. For Nika's life that gets Nika where she is in that moment in time. And so I had to decide to be just as committed to the work and allow God to be God and show me along the way what I needed to do, how I needed to pivot, what I needed to stay away from, you know, and just listening in more. Because once you commit to that and you say, okay, God, whatever you say, I'm, I'm listening. You know, tell me I'm a dreamer. So God always spoke to me, you know, through my dreams. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I was just like, wow, that was a weird, crazy dream until my dreams start to actually happen. And I'm like, whoa, OK, maybe I need to tune in more. Maybe I need to start listening more. Maybe I need to start, you know, journaling these things down a little more. And then what I did was I got in partnership with God. I didn't make God a separate thing from me. Mm -hmm. I got in partnership. OK, what are you trying to show me? What do I need to learn? Okay, this is what I heard, but what does that really mean? Mm -hmm. I had to start asking some some questions, you know, and this was outside of the church, right? So once I started asking my own questions, mm -hmm. then I started to get the answers that I needed for the situation that I was in or the situation that I was getting ready to walk into. So I felt like once I decided to partner with God, it's like, all right, it was the best link up ever. And it's like, all right, I got you. And I'm like, I got you. 
Just tell me what you need me to do. How are we going to roll? You know? So for me, that's how it really started. Like when I decided, you know what, God, I'm a partner with you in this life. I'm not going to say, all right, I'm just waiting on God to work it out. You know, I got rid of all that cliche, all that religious thinking. It took some time. <laughs> it took some time. But once I did and I and I really realized that, you know what? It's on me. Mm-hmm. It's on me to make a move. You know, it's on me to do things that I need to do in order to move my life forward. And I think that once I decided to do that, I think that God just started to bless the things that I did because I was walking exactly the way I was supposed to be walking and doing the things that I was designed to do. Mm -hmm. So what I loved about the book, I'll tell you the aspect that I think sets it apart because there are many books that talk about this in context, but you gave a step by step, like this is the step you need to take now. And <laughs> this is the step, this is the deliberate action that you need to take. And so while we may not take the complete journey, there were some things that I picked out that I thought was in important. You've already talked about journaling and how it was important for you to begin there. The next thing that stuck out to me was you had a literal contract in there that you needed to make with yourself. Not think about like you were signing on the dotted line, making yes. a contract with yourself. Why was this formal agreement for commitment important? Remember when I told you when you write something down, it's listen, that's what it is, right? Any contract. So if you sign a contract with a a recording studio or an artist or whoever you sign a contract with, that thing is binding, Mm -hmm. right? So why are we so quick to make commitments to other people and we don't make those same commitments to ourselves? Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, you know what? If you read uh, the contract and you sign it, then you're holding yourself accountable to the happiness that you say you want. You're committing to doing the work for yourself in signing this contract. So for me, I felt like it was more of a um, encouraging of commitment for people. Because we read stuff all the time. Say, oh, yeah, I should do that. Oh, that sounds good. You know what? I will do that. I will start that. You know what I mean? So people know that people lie. Right. People say they're going to do something and they don't do it. But commitment is doing what you said you would do long after the time and the mood that you set it in has passed. Mm -hmm. That's commitment. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to be committed to anything and anyone else, why not be committed to you? Mm -hmm. So So for me, that that's why it was important to have that, you know, to have that in there. Mm -hmm. It's so good because I think one of the things that I have noticed as I work with more and more people is that we don't trust ourselves. And the reason why we don't trust ourselves is because we don't honor the commitments that we make to ourselves. We say we want to diet, but we don't see it through. We say we want to change, but we don't see it through. We say we want all of these things, but we don't see it through. And because we don't honor the commitment we make to ourselves, we don't trust our own word to us. And so that's one of the reasons why it stuck out to me, because taking that deliberate step made you really reckon with, are you down to see this thing through and really hold yourself accountable accountable to being honorable to the word and the promise that you make for yourself. So I thought that that was really, really powerful. And so let's just keep going with the journey that you outlined. The next thing that you talked about was interview, interview. not interview. So yes. help me understand more about interview. Okay. So right now, this could be an interview style, you know, conversation. We're on a podcast. You're asking me questions. You know, I kind of know what you're going to ask so I can kind of prepare. That's an interview. It's something that you're prepared for. Mm-hmm. An interview is something you're not prepared for mm-hmm. because you don't want to dig. Like I said, nobody wants to get dirty. You don't want to dig. You don't want to ask yourself those tough questions because, again, that means you played a role. 
That means you got yourself here. That means it was something you did, something you said, something you did not do or say that got you here. So let's dig that out. Because if you want to truly be authentic, then you have to know yourself on a deeper level. And you have to allow yourself to see your flaws, to see your mistakes. You know what I mean? So that's what the interview is like. Like, why is your attitude so nasty? Mm -hmm. Like, why are you rude to people? You know, why can't you, you know, commit? Mm -hmm. You know, why, why are you always in doubt? Why are you always thinking somebody is trying to sabotage you or acting like a victim? Like, what is that? And where did that come from? Mm -hmm. And you can only find that, Denise, on an interview. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because in an interview, I can blame society. I can blame my mom. I could blame neglect. I could blame the mean girls, you know, at school. I, I can blame someone else. But the inner me, she knows what's real. So let's talk to her, okay? <laughs> let's talk to her and see what she has to say, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the difference between an interview and an interview. So what, what's interesting and the reason why it amuses me so is because I know in my own life, and this is where it does get dirty, if you're honest with yourself, because you can skate through all of this and stay very surface level. But if you're honest with yourself about what's really going on on the inside, you actually are preparing yourself to rise. And the reason why I say that is because when you think about a skyscraper being built, they go down just as far as they yes. intend to go up, right? Yes. The higher up they are intending to go with the building yes. in its yes. frame is how far down yes. they have to go. And so if you're really asking yourself, if you've gone on multiple journeys, if you've worked with multiple people, you read books and you've had experiences that have not yielded the success that you want, you got to ask yourself, am I going deep? A deep, right? Am yes. I excavating down to the real stuff that's going on? And so you're right. It does touch the inner parts of us. And that's where the truth is most known. But if you're not willing to truly excavate and get that stuff out, your success is going to be limited. It's only going to have such a, a a limiting range of motion because it's not going down deep enough to really prepare you to excel and elevate up to the levels of the skyscraper. And so this is a critical step. And this is where some of that difficulty that you talked about lies for all the questions that you ask. Now, can we just kind of skim past those answers? We absolutely can. <laughs> we can act as if we don't want to really deal with our stuff, but we are then threatening the result. We're not going to get out of it what we desire. We're not going to see the success to the degree that we really want because we're not going deep enough. What do you think about that? No, like at, when you first started talking, the image that I had in my head was a skyscraper. That's why I, I started laughing when you said that, because that's so true. And even as I look back, I can I can see exactly what you said. Right. I can see that. Yes, I saw little glimmers of success, little glimmers of confidence and, you know, all of that. I saw that. But like you said, it was only to a degree. But when I decided to go deeper, when I decided to sit that little girl, me on the couch, and I'm sitting across from her and start to have a conversation, that's the deep, right? Why, and I started to ask her, why are you hurt? What, what happened to you? Why do you feel that way? This was me talking to me, you know? And when I started to ask myself those questions, I started to get the answers that the adult me needed when I start to ask that little girl me the question because the adult me suppressed that stuff. You know, oh, that girl, that was so long ago, honey, that's in the past. I'm not thinking about that. But when I revisited the past, I'm like, oh, that's why I decided to do that. Oh, that's, oh, that, oh. Like a lot of stuff started to make sense. You know, and as they say, if you don't know where you've been, you don't know where you're going. Right. And if you don't reconcile where you've been, where you've been, 
you won't go as far as you desire to. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Until you start dealing with that stuff. So for me, it that was life changing. It makes me think about um, one of the scenarios that I really didn't get until I took that visit back. And so I'll give this as an example for myself and you can share one if you'd like. There was this thing with me with my husband when he would say, I'm going to do something. And if he didn't do it, it would just trigger me. And it could be something as simple as I said, he said he was going to fold the basket of laundry. And I'm telling you, if it didn't happen, I would have all manner of emotions going on with me. And it really took me going back to the broken promises of my dad. And how my dad would tell me he was going to come get me or he was going to do something for me. And in those formative years, I had so many broken promises that when someone tells me they're going to do something, be it simple or big, if it didn't happen, boy, oh boy, would it really just unleash all of these things within me. And so you're right. We often discount the necessity to deal with what happened to the little girl, right? Because I'm years away from that. And girl, that don't bother me none. And I'm over that and da 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 But I'm snapping at my husband over sweeping the floor or over a basket of laundry. And he looking like, what's the big deal? And in those instances, he wasn't dealing with me. He was dealing with the hurt. He was dealing with the pain. He was dealing with the disappointments that were in me, that were suppressed in me, that I really didn't even have a chance to fully understand until I was willing to take a visit of what was really going on inside of me. And so now it helps me show up in a better light because I was willing to take that deeper dive for something that was happening with me that was impacting me today. And so I get it and I've seen how it translates, but oftentimes we're not really willing to have that conversation with the little girl because we don't want to talk about what daddy did or what he didn't do. Yeah, that's 100%. I know for me, um, I was a girl with mom issues. Mm -hmm. So when a woman, you know, just in relationship, you know, with women, with girlfriends or making friends, um, I, that's where the performing started, you know, because my mom wasn't there. She was always working or it's like, well, what do you want? You know, it was kind of that type of relationship. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, well, if I did this and, you know, all of this and, you know, maybe they would be attracted to me. Maybe they would like me, you know, and I did all of that. And then when I did all of that and it still didn't seem like it was enough, I'm like, well, I did all the things like, why, why am I still the outcast? Why am I not being chosen? Why am I not hanging out with the girls? Why are they not, you know, all of that. And that took me back to why isn't my mom, you know, doing mother daughter things with me. Why is it my mom? You know, it took me back there. Mm -hmm. So that's why when I had children, I was like, you know what? I'm going to make sure that I do this, 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 and that, you know, with my girls. Now I'm sure they can say whatever they want to say about me because I'm not a perfect mom, Mm -hmm. you know? So I'm sure they have those things, but there were just certain things I wanted to make sure they experienced with me. Um, being their mom, empowering them, affirming them, you know, even redirecting them, you know, all of the things. And sometimes it wasn't balanced, you know, but for the most part, you know, I tried to show up for them. That That's kind of how it showed up for me in that mother daughter thing, mm-hmm. you know, and, and it did affect my relationship, you know, with other women mm-hmm. and how I trusted them or didn't trust them. Mm-hmm. Yep, exactly. And so I think, By us sharing those stories, that may help people really realize why this is valuable, why this is important. Okay, we could go on and on, but I do want to talk about one more step because I thought this was powerful. And this was the mirror step. The mirror step, it really feels like a transformative moment to take that journey. So walk us through the mirror step and then I'm going to make the people have to go get the book for the rest of it. Listen, I still, I still get emotional. Um, I 
I still get emotional about that because it's something, you know, it's like when you're, when you're taught, you look people in the eye when you talk to them, you know, you don't, you don't let people think they're intimidating you. You know, you look them eye to eye. Mm -hmm. Denise, it's nothing more powerful, phenomenal, transformative, about looking yourself in the eye. That part was the, that was the hardest for me. The hardest. Because I'm looking at me. I'm looking at me talking to me. But I'm not really looking at me. I'm looking through me. I'm looking into my heart. I'm looking into my soul. I'm looking into my spirit. And I'm calling out all of the things that I want to see come to realization, right? I'm calling out the champion. I'm calling out the beautiful woman. I'm, ca I'm calling her forward. And that's hard because how do you call somebody that you don't really know exists? How do you do that? I didn't know she was in there. I just knew that if I believed hard enough, right, and if I was crazy enough to think that words truly have power and that my words will go and do exactly what I say for them to go and do, I had to try this. I had to try it. And it was hard. And sometimes I couldn't see myself for the tears in my eyes, but I kept talking. I kept saying it. I kept saying it. I kept saying it. Until the woman that I was calling forth showed up in the mirror face to face with me. Mm. And I wouldn't stop calling her until she showed up. And sometimes I would be crying. I would be screaming, you know, and I had to also fight the the mental um, that mental part of me or that mental enemy. Who are you talking to? You sound crazy. Girl, you ain't changed. Like, you're not worthy. You're not pretty. Look at you. You know what I'm saying? I had to fight that because I felt like the louder I called for her, mm -hmm. the quieter that evil critic got in my head. And it worked because I can I became solar focused on calling her forth and I wasn't going to stop until she showed up. That's why I say, say what you want to see until what you've said, you've seen. Mm -hmm. It, 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 it. When I read it, you know, and I think the reason why it stuck out to me is because I understand the power of affirmations, but that's different when I'm sitting there and I'm reading them in the context of a book. But when you look in yourself in the face, in the mirror, and you are saying those things when part of what's inside of you still needs to be convinced that that is the truth about who you are, that you really have the ability are those things it is a game changer and that's why when I read it I was like oh my god this is a tremendously powerful experience if you will allow yourself to go there if you will allow yourself to take that step yes. it could really be a game changer in your life 100 percent. and for me I was just like you know what <laughs> Nika, what have you got to lose? What, what have you got to lose? There's And, and that's where that, because we do things alone that we wouldn't dare do in front of somebody else. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, what have you got to lose? There's nobody here but you. You know, there's nobody in here to judge you. There's nobody in here to look at you crazy. There's nobody in here trying to hurry you along. It's just you and you. You know what I'm saying? So, yes, that was the hardest part because half the time, Denise, I didn't believe what I was saying. I had never seen it. I had never heard it not referring to me. I've heard other people referring to other people that way, but never had I heard it referring to me. So how do you... How do you take the lie and believe it is truth mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when you believe the lie? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's hard. It's, a, it's very hard.
It's very hard. I really love, I, I heard um, Apostle Hilliard say this one time and he said, we believe whatever got to us first, even if it's a lie, it, if it got to us first. And then you spend so many years trying to uproot that lie so that the truth could come in because when it got to you first, you believed it. And mm-hmm. so you're right. It is hard. It is hard to shift our thinking. It is especially as it relates to us when we have outside factors witnessing and saying mm-hmm. those things about us to continue to add insult to injury, if you will, whether yeah. it's the criticisms or it's the taunting or it's the bullying, all of that coming in on top of these yeah. defeating thoughts that you already have about yourself. And so I think that's the reason why I love the book. I loved it because it was a very simple read. It wasn't complex. It had very deliberate exercises to change and shift that thinking. It was very intentionally done. And I think for any woman, and I would say any woman who is on a quest to Stop hiding, stop shrinking, to stop pretending. These are very practical things that you can do that doesn't require you to invest a whole heck of a lot of resources, but have the potential to truly change your life. Now, talk about change life. When we come back from the commercial, we're going to talk about how you have continued to ascend <laughs> and the experiences that you are having now, how you're showing up to serve, what you're accomplishing as a result of you taking the opportunity to do the work that you did. So we'll be right back. You know, conversations like the one that I'm having with Nika today are a clear reminder that we have so much history and baggage that we often bring into our today. Our past mistakes, choices, and decisions often haunt us. Those experiences, when they have traumatic implications, can keep us bound to what happen. And I am so excited that the unstoppable event is coming on November 14th through 16th, because the main message of unstoppable is what happened to you did not ruin you. Now brace yourself because we are coming for some heavy hitter topics this time. We're going to be talking about miscarriage because people who have had that devastating experience often stall out and really begin to think that something is wrong with them. We're going to be talking about abuse because many of us who have experienced abuse often feel like we are ruined and we're going to talk about abortion. The choice of abortion is not one I want to debate, but if you've experienced it, chances are the residual effect from that choice has impacted you. Now, I want you to know this one truth. What happened to you did not ruin you and you can still build a life that you love. And this is the thing that I know from my own experience until we deal with it we can't move forward. And so I want you to make plans to join me and my featured guests for Unstoppable on November 14th through the 16th. Now this event, this three night event is going to be a life changing epic event. So if you have experienced miscarriage, if you've experienced abuse or you've experienced abortion, I want you to meet me at the table because I want you to know that you can move forward and that what happened to you did not ruin you. So visit my website for more information. That's www.denisetaylor.live. Okay, now that we're back, we are on the heels of a significant accomplishment for you. I have to tell you, I was cheering for you from afar. I was praying for you, hoping that the event would be as successful as it ultimately culminated in being for you. So tell us about 
the experience, the vision, how you got there. And then we'll actually talk about your expo event. So how I got there, of course, me serving women. Um, during the pandemic, there are a lot of women that was in a group that I was in that launched businesses. Um, during that time, I also, you know, launched another business because I was having anxiety. My daughter was like, you need to find something to do instead of watching the news, you know? So, um, it came from a place of me saying, okay, if I did this, would y'all come? Would y'all show up? You know, if I put together an event, would y'all come showcase your businesses? You know, and so they said yes. But prior to that, for March, for Women's History Month, I did a Women in Business Week. Just virtually, just my way of, you know, helping them to kind of, you know, ease on out there talking about their business and such. And so then that's when the opportunity came for me to say, OK, you know what? If I put together an event, would y'all come? You know, because by this time, the world is starting to open up a bit. So I'm like, OK, maybe we can do a little something. And so I started to plan. I'm a people person. I love energy. I love getting people together. I just love that. And so I started planning the events and last year was the first one and it was amazing. And so, you know, I had some of those same women, Hey, Nika, are you going to do it again? I was like, no, that was just a one time. <laughs> Denise, I was like, no, that was just one time. Like, girl, go be great. You know, no. And so the more I kept being asked, Nika, are you going to do it again? Are you going to do it again? You know, and at the time I was, um, talking to one of our mutual friends that we love so much, Crystal. Mm -hmm. And she was like, Mika, maybe it's time for you to shift into, you know, a little something else. And I was like, like what? You know, <laughs> like what? You know? And so that's when the ladies start to come. And for me, Denise, I'm, I'm so in tune with the signs. And when things are kind of starting to shift for me, you know, when God is kind of nudging me and sending people my way and I'm like, OK, you know, and so, boom, that's how year two happened. Yeah. I, you know, you haven't told us the name of the event. You haven't told us nothing. <laughs> so last year it was in, in, because I, I kind of forget that it was a business because last year when I did it, it was just called Women in Business Expo. Mm -hmm. but this year when I really started to plan it, I was like, you know, this could really be something. I was like, maybe I need to make this a business, you know? So I, um, I, I now call it pink iron women in business expo. So pink iron is the business that I launched in the midst of doing this. So it's called pink iron women in business expo. So this was year two, um, just two weeks ago, almost. Mm -hmm. But the journey there was, again, you know, when you're going to another level, each level requires something different of you. And just when you think you've mastered some things, boom, you're hit with something else. You know, because this one, I went really big. You know, I took a lot of risk um, as a businesswoman with this event. Last year, it was just, okay, the space, okay, okay. You know, it was just putting together a little event. But this year, you know, uh, the sophomore year, I, I referenced a lot. I was like, girl, this is my sophomore album. I got to make it better than the first, you know? <laughs> like, I don't want to be a one-hit wonder, you know? So I was like, okay. And I just went all in and boom. And you had a fashion show. Oh my God. You had vendors. Tell us what took place. <laughs> so yeah, so I had a fashion show. Um, I had some speakers um, that were there. So we had speaker sessions. We had a live fashion show that was there. And we had a host of women-owned businesses this year, I had some girlpreneurs in the building, which was amazing. I have an eight-year-old friend that has a t-shirt company. It's called um, Madison's Touch. She's amazing. So she was there. I had some young ladies that were artists. I mean, beautiful pieces that was there. Um, it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. It was it was more than I thought it was going to be. Honestly, I didn't really know how it was going to turn out, Denise. I was just hoping and praying that it was excellent. And um, it was. And I think that for me, 
And I'll tell you this. So in the planning process, I wanted to get a billboard. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I called one of my girlfriends here that has a state farm agency because she has several billboards. And I was just talking. She was like, Nika, that's a that's a big financial commitment. You know, you got to make sure it's in the right location. You know, all of these things. And she was like, but if you want to do it, do it. I was like, I don't know. So I was talking to my sister and my sister was like, sister, do it, go. And I was like, what? It's a lot of money. And she was like, but Nika, she was like, it's going to take that, you know, for you to really plant a larger seed in your business and sacrifice that. I was like, "Uh, okay. And so I was like, okay, God, what do I do? Like this, me and you, what do I do? Is this all Nika? You know? (laughs) And God was like, when you do this, so much more is going to open for you. I was like, I jumped at that point, Denise. I'm like, okay, boom, got the billboard. And when I did it, Denise, when I tell you, first of all, it was like, I heard God say, it's going to get bigger, bigger. There's more, there's more. Once I did that, And I don't know what the there's more is as of right now, but when I did that, something really released in me, Mm -hmm. right? And so when the event itself happened and just the, just the way it came about and just being in the room and just hearing the women talk about how amazing it was, how energetic and positive the atmosphere was and you know because I told them I was like listen I was like I want you ladies to set your intention yes this is about making money but I want you to set your intentions beyond that who do you desire to meet what collaborations do you want to come out of this we can make money easily money's a tool you know but relationship currency will take you places that your money cannot so i don't want you to get that twisted so i did an opening kind of welcome for them and i just wanted them to kind of be in that in that mindset and not be so money driven because when you're so money driven you can miss the relationships because you're distracted right so i think that kind of ignited things and then the fashion show was just amazing that's awesome and I'm like, okay, I I see what I see what this is. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's really about me helping to train the younger generation to step into their power as not only women, but women business owners mm-hmm. and, and keeping them in the mindset of being a village influencer. Right. And that was the most powerful thing for me. Like it wasn't it wasn't the venue and all the shiny things. It was the intangibles that I know that those ladies, you know, and gentlemen, because we did have some men come through to support. But that's what I believe that was deposited into the hearts of everybody that came to those doors. Well, I cannot wait for the junior year. I cannot wait for you to continue to go forward and it get bigger and better. You know, watching someone blossom from an idea to seeing it come to life is an incredible experience. And so I rejoice with you because I know it's hard. I know when you put yourself out there, it's hard. When you're counting on other people to show up and do their part and take part, it's hard. But I love the vision, the creativity, the impact, the influence, like everything that was coupled into it is phenomenal. And you touch the lives of people that day. And that's a mark that can't be replaced. And so I'm so excited for you. Thank you so much. All right. Now around these parts, I like to tap into wisdom. And so by encouraging people to build a life that they love, I think when we share our wisdom from our life experiences, we can help much like the work that you're doing. So let's see what wisdom you have to share. The first question is this, what's your life wisdom? What would you tell your younger self about life if you could? Oh my gosh. I would be like, Nika girl, it works out. You know, that's what I would tell my younger self, like, girl, 
you bomb. <laughs> you know, you're going to do all the things that you never thought that you would do. And it's okay to not be okay sometimes. Like, don't be so hard on yourself. I would tell my younger self to love myself harder and more intentionally mm -hmm. and embrace the things about me that people like to point out because that's what makes me unique. That's good. That's, so that's really what I would good. tell my younger self. Really, really, really good. Love wisdom. What would you tell your younger self about love if you could? Oh, what will I tell my younger self about love? Hmm. Loving myself fully and completely will make it easier for me to love other people without conditions. That's right. You know, is and I don't think we understand that until we do the type of work that we talked about today. Yeah. Um, yeah. because what, and that's what, it, it's so funny. I hate to digress, but it's so funny <laughs> because I was talking to a young lady and she was expressing her desire for a relationship. And I said, you need to take a healing journey. And it wasn't because I said she was flawed. When you take a healing mm, journey, mm. you get clarity about what you want, what you so don't want. Like you get so much clarity that mm. when you don't take that journey, you show up and accept things that really don't fit you. That's it, it, it fits that person you were pretending to be. It doesn't yeah. fit you. And so you're so right. Learning to love yourself and doing the work to understand who you are. It sets you up to love people without conditions like you like you said. But I don't think we we connect the dots and we we're still looking mm -hmm. outside and we're yeah. still wanting to blame them for who they are and what they're not doing. But if you do the work, you will attract exactly oh, yeah. what's good for you, for sure. Oh, yeah, 100 percent. All right. Happiness wisdom. What would you tell your younger self about happiness if you could? Happiness is a choice, girl. <laughs> you wake up and it's so funny. I have a sticky. Um at the place where I where I work at my desk and it says choose happy. Mm -hmm. It's a choice. It's not an emotion. It's a decision. You know, I choose to be happy. You know, I choose to find joy. You know, so I would tell my younger self, girl, happiness is a choice and it's an inside job. Mm. There you go. There you go. Yeah. I love it, Nika. This has been such an incredible conversation. So tell listeners how they can get connected with you. Oh, man, I want everything. I told y'all I'm social. So you can find me everywhere. If you're on Facebook, Nika Arnold Scott. If you're on Instagram, you can find me at I am Nika Scott. I'm on TikTok, honey, at The Wife Rehab on TikTok. Of course, you can go to my website, thewiferehab.com. Um, that's where all of my stuff is, basically, on thewiferehab.com. My podcast is on pause right now because the expo just kind of took everything that I have. But you can go and listen to my old episodes. Um, and I'm on everything, Apple, Google, Anchor, all of that at The Wifey Rehab. Awesome. Well, Nika, I have to say it and I say it with such honor. Success looks so good on you. Thank you. And thank you for being with us on today. Thank you for having me, Denise. Well, that's it, beautiful. Thank you for tuning in. Don't ever forget that you are truly blessed with life, love, and all the happiness your heart can hold. Be relentless in building a life you love without apology. I'm Denise Taylor, and you can always find me in our free Facebook community. It's Embrace Your Power, easy to find. Now be sure to rate and review this podcast and share it with a friend. And make sure you subscribe so that we can stay connected each week. And remember, God has not given us a spirit of fear. He gave us power. So be sure to always embrace your power and go.